This episode brought to you by preparewithdronetech.com. Don't wait, get prepared. It feels like things have actually gotten worse since January 6th, honestly. Much worse than it was on January 6th. It's much worse than it was in November. It's much worse after January 6th. After 9-11, we had done nothing. We had done nothing. Right. Think about that. We had done nothing after 9-11. And to me, though there was less loss of life on January 6th, January 6th was worse than 9-11. We're at a much worse place than we've been. And as I've said, I think to you before, I think we're in the most perilous point in time since 1861 in the advent of the Civil War. <laughs> I think I just had a stroke. No, I'm sorry. What happened on January 6th was not worse or in any way comparable to what happened on 9-11. 9-11 was a large-scale Islamic terrorist attack that ended in more than 3,000 dead Americans in multiple wars. January 6th was a minor riot involving a couple hundred people out of tens of thousands that ended up with people wandering around and then leaving. There was an undisciplined mob. There were some rioters and some who committed acts of vandalism. But let me be clear. There was no insurrection, and to call it an insurrection, in my opinion, is a bold-faced lie. Watching the TV footage of those who entered the Capitol and walked through Statuary Hall showed people in an orderly fashion staying between the stanchions and ropes taking videos and pictures. You know, if you didn't know the TV footage was a video from January the 6th, you would actually think it was a normal tourist visit. Now I have a lot more of this segment to show you, but first take a moment to hear about this special offer for my viewers. These days, the future is still more uncertain than ever. That's why people who know what's coming are using today to prepare. You can't wait until the last moment. By then, it's too late. The most important thing you need is long-term storage emergency food. It stays fresh for up to 25 years and will be there when you need it. I strongly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's leader in self-reliance. They're the only source my family uses for emergency food planning. And right now, you can save $50 off a four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000-plus calories a day. Calories give you the energy you need to survive. And saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. That's preparewithdronetech.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So back on topic, nothing that happened on January 6th was even remotely comparable to 9-11. The only person killed was an unarmed Trump supporter. There was never any threat against the democracy or any of the people inside the Capitol. Not to mention what old Joe Biden told us. If you wanted to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. What happened at the Capitol was only slightly more intense than what happened when Democrats invaded and attempted to stop the process of confirming Brett Kavanaugh. Of course, they were treated completely different in the media as heroes. What happened on January 6th is basically comparable to your average everyday Democrat rally, not just over the past year and a half, but even going back to the Bush administration. As I've pointed out before, Democrats rioted during George W. Bush's inaugural parade, claiming the election was stolen. On the day George W. Bush was inaugurated, tens of thousands of Americans poured into the streets of D.C. in one last attempt to reclaim what had been taken from them. They pelted Bush's limo with eggs and brought the inauguration parade to a halt. So just to get all of that out of the way, on its face, this comparison is absurd. And really, when you think about it, an incitement to violence. They're outright asking the government to treat Republicans and Trump supporters like they would Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. The problem is, is because, because there's been no accountability, it's given permission to do more of this. Accountability, right. You mean like you and the media are supposed to be holding the party in power accountable, but instead you spend all your time trying to criminalize the Democrat party's political opposition. Were you holding power to account when you lashed out at the critics of China who suggested that the virus may have come from a Chinese lab? You claim those people were racist right-wing conspiracy theorists. So according to the media, the lack of accountability is against the people involved in January 6th. I mean, are they talking about all those people being held without charges or all those people not being charged with insurrection? What about all these grandmas and regular people being picked up for just being in the area? Where's the accountability for Democrats and their state media for inciting an extremist Democrat into attacking a GOP baseball game where he planned to assassinate half the GOP Senate while screaming, this is for health care? Of course, incited by the nonstop message from the Democrats and their media that Republicans wanted you to die. I was there at the ball field when 
Stephen Scalise almost died uh, from a very, very angry, violent man who was incited really by rhetoric on the left. And this hasn't been reported enough. When he came onto the field with a semi-automatic weapon, firing probably close to 200 shots at us, shooting five people and almost killing Steve Scalise, he was yelling, this is for health care. And also remember that these are the same people that screen mostly peaceful as businesses burned down behind them. But I think it's pretty clear that that's the purpose of propaganda like this. It's all just misdirection to focus on their political opposition and silence dissent, eventually even outlawing their political opposition. I do too. I do too. And it, it frightens me. You know what scares me the most, Matthew, is that I'm not sure that most Democrats, at least elected Democrats in Washington, agree with us or as afraid as we are. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Between popular media narratives about crushing and dehumanizing the center-right and nefarious stuff like HR 666, yes, that's what it's actually called, the Anti-Racism and Public Health Act of 2021, which essentially lays the groundwork for a so-called anti-racism enforcement body under the umbrella of public health. Considering there's already people out there in the media referring to white people in America as a public health threat, it should be very concerning to everyone. Millions of white evangelicals adults in the U.S. do not intend to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, mistrust of science, mistrust of uh, etc. and also their politics. Now this is a public health issue. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comment section. If you're interested in following me on alternate platforms, you can find all those links in the description and pinned comment.